buenas tardes para todos. Bienvenidos. Good afternoon, all, and welcome to our last panel of today. The issue that we will be talking is the role of spectrum within the framework of the digital transformation economy. We have five guests, and before we give way to them, I would like to say, uh, convey some messages of the conference that to, early this morning our director gave to us. Uh, he presented the new policy for Spectrum, and he showed us that uh, uh, intention of the new policy, the call to modernize the radio electric spectrum to support the digital transformation of the economy. And from that point of view, we saw how spectrum becomes that central axis, main axis in that process of digital transformation. We also saw how he show us the road that we are laying out from the agency, starting from our policy for spectrum with that uh, model for spectrum management and a five-year plan. That's um, something we have been working in the agency for some time now. And in that sense, since last year, we started to work together with the different sectors of the economy that were previously prioritized according to their level of strategy or impact it has over the economy of the country. 15 sectors where productive sectors were selected, considered strategic. And there we find opportunities of use of spectrum. And we had also the opportunity to conform working groups and get to know the plans and projects that each one of these sectors has and have been undertaken when it comes to digital transformation. And that allow us as entity to get to know the needs of spectrum for each one of them. Also, it's important to understand the role, I mean, the role of spectrum and that uh, digital transformation approach. And for that reason, we have, uh, let's say, assigned this lot of time as part of our Congress so that we can talk not only from the role of spectrum, but also uh, some uh, uh, events that we have been observing in this post-pandemic uh, time. So without any further ado, I'm going to invite our panelists so that they can make a brief introduction to this topic from their point of view and roles of the institutions they represent. They will be telling us what they think about this. So first of all, I'm going to Bibiana. Bibiana will be giving us uh, an introduction to this uh, uh, topic. So we can go to the presentation of Bibiana. Hello, thank you. Good afternoon, all. I was uh, just thinking that with this group of panelists, we have the big challenge of closing the day, closing this international Congress of Spectrum. We also have the challenge of putting some dynamics and putting a lot of attitudes so as to motivate you this last bit. So good afternoon all. And before starting, I would like to thank the invitation to this International Congress, International Congress of Spectrum and what is the role of Spectrum within the framework of the digital transformation of Colombia. I think we have the main strategic sectors here in present so that we can analyze that and also to read and thank Anne, specifically Miguel Felipe for inviting me to all panelists. I'm really delighted to share with Paola, Jose, Santiago, Juan David and Diane, of course, that will act as moderator. So we can start. Next slide. Okay. I want to show here like a, a scheme that we want to like to work in the national planning department because we have been doing this for several years now. That is from the previous national development plan where there was not still a pact for digital transformation. That is that sector didn't exist within the national development plan. We have been building since then that scheme and we have been feeding it and we can use it in the current national plan, the development. And this is the first time we have a pact for digital transformation. And clearly this has migrated to the ICT ministry. Um, 
but we have involved more elements. I like to show this because uh, we know, or we could know in what areas are we working. On one hand, just to tell you, the key message here is the spectrum, as we all know, is a strategic uh, uh, factor that we're transforming the digital ecosystem and is the first link that we have. So that input clearly gives way to other inputs so that we can move forward in this digital ecosystem. And here I want to say something. Generally speaking, because the digital ecosystem is conformed by several elements, including those that are directly related to the provision of service, uh, the first one, the four ones that we see there, uh, infrastructure services interface, but also those that have to do with the way the services are being used, telecommunication, that is the more specific bit, the added value, and the users. And we have been involved in other elements. Uh, cross-cutting that we uh, have prospective analysis and in the national planning department we have been uh, believers that we must use this tool like prospective analysis in order to analyze the technological trends because clearly our sector evolves and is changing more quickly than other sectors so that's why I wanted to show this to you and to tell you that basically here in the National Planning Department from the digital development section, all these links are included in our analysis. It means that we are a specialized sector, that we analyze the infrastructure, the inputs, the services, but we also have that multi-sectorial dimension on it. That is to have a proper outlook of all this. And notwithstanding we are specialized, we have that responsibility of uh, providing support, uh, having a coordinated work with all productive sector, that is with all sectors of the economy. So that makes that, uh, that is a challenge that we have before us, um, not even during the pandemics, all, you know, all time. So it is within this uh, scenario that we have been involved in other elements. So data infrastructure is one of the big challenges we have been working on data analytics and here i want to uh, give you this picture so that you know where you are located and see not only the evolution of the sector but the importance this sector has for the rest of the economic sector that conform the overall economy so the digital development section thinking that uh, we need to work more and in inputs and be enable the conditions for the deployment infrastructure we carry out analysis of the conditions required maybe uh, you were called to answer some of the surveys that we sent to some of you. We, oftentimes we send, a, a, put forward some requirement, but all this is done in pro improvement, really. It's not to, not to annoy you. So, and this is basically the, maybe may may some of you, or many of you know, if we improve and we, turn, uh, depending on how we want to see the assignation of spectrum, that uh, would need call for more investment in the economy, uh, especially the ICT set up. Well, I was saying, but clearly this uh, uh, has an impact, and we all know that, uh, and it has an impact on better coverage. And that, at the end, it has an impact on the users. That's what we want, to have a better supply, more supply, so users can choose. And that's another link of this uh, long change or part of the equation that we want to share with you and tell you. Spectrum is an enabler for digital transformation, but it's also uh, promoter for economic reactivation and we not only because of the pandemic this comes from before the pandemics but, but uh, we were able to overcome the pandemics thanks to the implementation of this uh, or the use of this tool so it's an enabler of digital transformation and it's part of the overall equation but i also want to tell you that uh, to have that role over the spectrum uh, to have the spectrum within the digital traffic goes beyond the mere connectivity. Uh, this uh, we also heard here about digital transformation, and this is something we are familiar with now. But what happens when we go and see what is going on in the different territories of the nation? We can find barriers or challenges. One of the studies we conducted this year, 
our uh, office was uh, to promote the digitalization of the economy and the colonial uh, society at large based on a prospective territory and a ter level of territory. We wanted to elaborate a diagnosis of the alignment of the public policies with the territorial development plans and see how well aligned they are with the digital transformation policy at national data territorial. So basically what we found in this um, kind of preliminary result is that the development territorial development plans uh, that is between 2020 and 2023 included more terms that have to do with the development of ICT, with the digital part, digitalization, the data management and analytics. This compared with other plans, with previous plans, 2016 or 2019 is something new. And this is what generates a very a new challenge. Oh, how interesting it would be to improve this uh, topic at a territorial level. But clearly for that, we need that from the very first part of the that equation of the chain, we need to be strong and more uh, the spectrum plays a preponderant role. So uh, kind of a parenthesis in this, uh, what I told you we were be working on from the national development plan and what we imagine it would be the next national development plan. The uh, it, it, part of the law 1978 is the change of focus in 2019, maximization of collection of uh, of, uh, of taxes, uh, and that is an element that not only be part of the spectrum, but that we should be adopted for the building of infrastructure to promote e trade, etc. So we continue betting not only to the maximization of of taxes and collection matter, but to welfare, to well-being. And how can we definitely modernize, if this is, we can call it that way, the management and efficient use of spectrum? Why? Well, because everything I've been telling you that is uh, quite relevant in these days. If, if we don't lay down the foundation for that and the ecosystem, everything I've been showing you won't have or won't be that strong. It would be possible even. So for the next national development plan, we are imagining an opportunity to include the new elements of policy for the assignation of spectrum, for instance. And in the ENP, or National Plan Department, we are open doors for you to uh, contribute. But also I want to tell you, and that is to give you some figures uh, about that show the importance of our sector currently. The progress of the, you know, the goals of the National uh, Development Plan is 63.12%. And only the Pact for Digital Transformation has a progress of 71.37%. That is, we are above the mean of the overall progress made in the National uh, Development Plan. It's something that uh, is contributing. And the figure that we know that is the percent of household with the connection to uh, internet, mo both mobile and mobile, the target is 70%. Right now, as of October, is 56.5%. Okay, let's say we can reach the 70, the target, but regardless of that, there will still be a gap there. And even if some elements do not take place, like renovation of spectrum, and let's say use of the entire spectrum, we will see that later on that deployment infrastructure won't take place and that we won't be able to reach that goal. So I wanted to say, tell you what we are imagining that is coming next in the next national development plan. And what we are thinking is to have an analysis of the mechanisms that we are allowed to dynamize and modernize efficient use of the spectrum, um, analyze the establishment of a secondary market for spectrum, uh, maybe the free use of rare electric spectrum to uh, motivate the deployment infrastructure, also methodologies for evaluation, proposed modifications, everything what is needed, the, any input that we can receive are welcome to, to lay down a strong foundation for the next national development plan with the uh, closing and uh, just to say that uh, public policy for the digital transformation are going to have that uh, we're going to be successful if we manage that for the very beginning from that very first link of the value chain we can uh, lay down strong foundations thank you
Many thanks, Viviana, for your introduction. Quite comprehensive and timely. Uh, what sharing us that study of territory and digital transformation in the territories. Uh, we believe that conditions are different there, and it's important to have everything in context. So that you can formulate the suitable public policy. Now you have mentioned something very interesting. That is the need to have, um, uh, or it's evident for what you said, that what the role of spectrum is in digital transformation. Now the last bit you mentioned, uh, what is coming next year, so you will find that in the master plan spectrum next year, there are some projects that have been proposed uh, very much aligned to the needs that you have identified in your study. So many thanks for intervention. Now I'm going to leave you with Paola Herrera, the senior leader of the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, so please, the floor is yours. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're very happy to be part of this panel, to be here before you with full energy, good attitude, uh, this last part of the conference. So for me, this invitation to speak to you, uh, I think is quite important. With I thank the panelists that are here with me, because I believe there are topics that uh, allow me to be very much in contact. When I went, when I was in Anne, I touched these topics, but now in this new role that we are working, um, very much aligned to digital transformation, very much aligned, uh, you know, say, to make sure that there is transformation in all senses in the industry, in all sectors, industry, etc. Because we know that um, to move forward and to um, yeah, to enrich the uh, spectrum is uh, indispensable for in, in fourth industrial revolution, industry for 4.0. So I'm going to do this uh, presentation from the perspective of the center, the objective of which is to maximize the benefits of this fourth industrial revolution, inclusion of these technologies for uh, inclusive and sustainable development in Latin America. So this is an organism that is uh, affiliated to the World Economic Forum and that serves as support for uh, Latin America. This is the only center, uh, Spanish speaking, there's a network of centers worldwide, but this is the only one that is, uh, uh, let's say, deals with the, uh, in Spanish. So the center is uh, focalizes in four important uh, points. On one hand, we had the economy based on data to improve competitiveness, um, to yeah, you know, not only for companies but for entire cities, the, and also and I will be focusing this a bit more than the other three. What we what we think is needed for Colombia to become a reference for for uh, farming 4.0. That is to take advantage of. Um, uh, this is one of the sectors that we can benefit most with the use of technology. Uh, new technologies like IoT, um, uh, and here especially the role of spectrum is fundamental because if we are talking about uh, uh, thousands and thousands of hectares in the countryside uh, through our sensors in uh, different set points. And then IoT, we can capture information about the land, the ground, the atmosphere, the climate, and know where, when can we harvest, when can we plant or seed. So this is. Um, it's, it's transcendental that we can have that development the use of spectrum uh, space precisely and uh, mobile point of view uh, but it's what thing that we need this is uh, something that is being uh, conducted in the center we have an exercise of 10 pilots actually uh, using the technologies of the fourth revolution one of the um in order to f select the parts that are going to be part of the project is to analyze connectivity, uh, Wi-Fi, or well, you no, know, what is required for connectivity, what connectivity exists. 
there. But spectrum for that for cognitive is completely necessary, as you may imagine. And also in the center, we are working on digital transformation in companies. Once more, the role of spectrum is fundamental. Here, mobility is more important than anything else because uh, we are talking here about shipments, uh, efficient distribution, uh, technologies that we require spectrum because they're going to be tied to a wire or cable. Um, and it's actually a need to com collect information and convey that information to the management of the company. And finally, there's another important point that we are working on, and that is the, the work conducted with the cities so that uh, they can become leaders um, for the development of smart cities, for instance, and this is part of the topic that we're going to make for the discussion, the intelligent or smart network. Latin America, led by the center. I will be talking to you a little bit more about that later on. But here also talking about uh, responsible policies, about the regulation and use of new technologies, uh, especially uh, IoT. And when we talk about IoT, spectrum is there in between. The frequency bands that we use and the free spectrum even IBT. So I'm much on the idea and I applaud what Viviana was saying about the need about more spectrum of free use. We can have a very careful study of bands and be able to uh, have more spectrum in the countries in the region. Colombia is one that have a clear regulation of what kind of spe free spectrum can be used. And that is fundamental for IoT, for instance. And precisely to help the persons that want to become uh, entrepreneurs, that want to uh, resort to technology for their entrepreneurship, the spectrum is fundamental. So we are very much aligned in the center with uh, this uh, dynamics. Uh, national government as well as companies agree to promote the efficient use uh, spectrum, generally speaking. So uh, once more, we are perfectly aligned to that and we benefit from that because we are in a position to help companies, cities, uh, those are our partners in this. And how through wireless connections and through IoT, the technologies of for industrial revolution uh, can uh, contribute to the transformation. Then I mentioned in this project, that is the G20 Smart Cities Partnership Initiative. Right now, there are six cities that are part of this partnership, Bogotá, Córdoba, Buenos Aires, Medellín, yeah, in Colombia there are two, Bogotá, Medellín, um, and and, and Mexico. Uh, we plan to uh, involve another city so that we can have 10. Um, we are working with a, a group of experts that can know about technology, that know about wireless communications, that, that they can support their cities and the digital transformation. And for that, we need to have um, a uh, good assignation and location of the spectrum so that cities can make use. Uh, cities normally are not uh, inclined to, that to provide infrastructure, but operators need spectrum so that they can use that infrastructure. So when we talk about this uh, migration to smart cities and the need, you to, need of uh, internet of things, we are talking here actually about uh, millions and millions of devices connected that will require uh, more spectrum. Spectrum is mobility. The spectrum is something that is required to, uh, let's say, uh, cover big territories. Um, it's a, something fantastic and wonderful, very much aligned to our expectations and the work we are conducting. Thank you. Thanks, Paula, for your introduction. Quite complete. Uh, last year, we had the opportunity to 
a workshop, a working group with a, a, a farming group, um, also representatives from the Ministry for Agriculture. And it was a good opportunity to get to know what is being done in digital transformation, to hear from them. Uh, about their needs, about uh, what coverage is in the rural areas. Because of a uh, consideration of time, I'm going straight to Santiago Pinto, uh, Digital Transformation Manager of Andy. Hello, good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Can you hear me well? <laughs> There was music in the background. Uh, hello, Viviana. Hello, Paola. Greetings to all panelists. To Annie, uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Quite valuable. And it's quite complex at this time of the day, you know, to be approaching the closing of this car Congress. So I share with uh, Viviana and Paola have said, and of course, what have been discussed throughout the day um, for us in Andy. Clearly, the approach of you have seen, and you have seen there, is uh, um, uh, to become uh, digital Colombia. And uh, clearly, Spectrum is the connecting access to all of this. Uh, it falls within the logic of the other five axes that we want to develop since 2016. Digital transformation uh, section office in Andy. Uh, that first country, Latin America, because this is a conversation around an ecosystem, a joint work between private and private sector. So the connectivity axis is uh, completely valid in Colombia, that uh, Colombia digital country is, uh, you know, is in our webpage. You can find their information. That has been something that we have been having uh, working on since 2016 with the corresponding milestone. And in that, uh, in that uh, they have uh, 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 economy, government, uh, human talent, connectivity, and, and so spectrum is a uh, cross-cutting enabler. And there is a reality. Uh, reality is that uh, what we've been hearing is about uh, economic reactivation and the new economy that is coming. Uh, so. Uh, that is the new sort of the economy what is going to happen with the different digital ecosystems that download them to the different territories uh, bogota for instance is talking about the pot that is the land distribution scheme necessary to build that smart city that we all want to have what is going to happen iotech how health tech can be improved or can we improve education so that take us to that conversation of 5G and so forth. So as first exercise to explain why this is something that involves digital competitiveness and who you know, knows that with the corresponding indicator uh, before other indicators or KPIs rather, um, and to go um, uh, forward, how do we see digital transformation? It's an exercise. It's looking for, I connect this with a com previous conversation, and it's a reality. Quality of life and productivity. And for that, we need to know that the spectrum has a, a role to play. Where are we heading to in terms, let's say, to 2030? Where are we heading to in that um, goals of productivity and well being? Uh, and remember what was discussed in Scotland, COP26, to be sustainable, be consistent in the provision of services. But this is not only a question of technology. This is a, a change of attitude, of a mindset. Uh, that involves, of course, leadership, culture, optimization of process and talent. And the bottom uh, this discussion at the very bottom of this is regulation and intelligent deregulation. Uh, surely, remember what we have been talking about 5G, that capacity that has to improve the conditions so that we can have a better quality of life. And many technologies are involved here, what Paola was talking about. But ground that so that the citizen can see, it, you know, it's not only for the technicians, that, you know, it's for everybody. So it's something tangible for those of you who are listening to us so that you can have a better internet, so that you can work remotely, so that you can start your own business, become an entrepreneur, so that you can share data, download a film, uh, and, you know, download that, ground that, and 
you know, that will become your new day-to-day -day life. Um, work with all public entities, interact with the government. You no, know, so that is we want that type of approach. So, industrial competitiveness. We have a serious challenge in productivity, especially in different economic sectors, not the traditional ones. We are very much on top of it to follow this topic, and the idea is to heighten the the bar. And Colombia has a wonderful opportunity to become a star, a protagonist in 5G. And what comes next is uh, uh, no, the reality that is the involvement of different actors and stakeholders, big companies and other players. And it, it is uh, where you need to see this is more than just a taxation. No? This is something that really should work for the economic progress of the country. So, I'm going to go to Consula Costa, CTEL consultant. Many thanks. First of all, it's a pleasure for me to share with you um, with such important persons here, like the panelists you know, shared with. Many thanks to Anne for having me here, for inviting me to participate in this Congress. To be honest, it's a pleasure to see Santiago and Juan David um, in this uh, discussion. Let's go to the next slide. Anne, aware of the importance of the radio spectrum in all digital transformation processes and with the intention of carrying out a transformation spectrum uh, for the long term and with the support of Sintel that you know already, can carry out workshops for and uh, with the main sectors of the Colombian economy. In order to identify the potential uses of spectrum that um, for the benefit of the economy. But these sectors were not chosen uh, just because of that. They were chosen based on a serious analysis, uh, serious criteria. The criteria that were taken into consideration were uh, maybe you realize that uh, belong to critical infrastructure, so the contribution to GDP, the level of skillfulness, the pre sectoral prioritization according to the goal for development, and also the pact for digital transformation, uh, the prioritization according to COMPASS, the document for development. And each one of these 15 sectors that were chosen, you can see there that a workshop uh, was conducted in that workshop the industries of different sectors participated the most representative one uh, and the representatives of each sector that is to say the corresponding ministry uh, was invited to colombia productiva uh, that is the name of the workshop the trade guilds participated the unions especially Ani, represented by Santiago, and providers, leading providers, uh, according to the magic quadrant for Garnet, participated, bringing to these workshops um, uh, what were the ideal solution and the perspective for technological solutions. That is to say that this coincide with what Viviana was uh, mentioning. And that is to have the right evidence and the, some providers of services also participated in this uh, industrial uh, so that they ground or download the use of spectrum uh, specific uses like infrastructure in the perspective of this digital one we analyzed each one of these sectors the processes, the specific processes of the value chains of each one of the sectors. And they evidence the potential uses of the spectrum, the need of the radioelectric spectrum currently, what they need, and the projected future needs and the future barriers for their employment or use. As mentioned this morning, 
actually the need to actually have a greater availability of the spectrum. And as was mentioned by Juliano, and it was mentioned by Santiago and all the guest speakers, it's a, an aspect of a great importance to be able to, to actually face this digital progress of this modernization, yeah? The spectrum in the different bands, in low bands, in middle bands, and in high bands, the spectrum that is dedicated spectrum to private networks as well as to operators or network providers. And, uh, and as we mentioned this morning, here it's not an issue of a threat of the private network for to, to the network operators and so on. No, they're their multiple coexistence so that they leverage one and the uh, onto the other it's easy to do this it's easy to consider that what we are creating worldwide is these competition environments of the um, private networks and of the network operators which uh, in different mixtures uh, they give uh, uh, wireless solutions to different sectors but this availability of the spectrum and that we do there where it should be at reasonable cost, really, as um, was mentioned with Rondo in the high costs of the spectrum, sort of break up or are a hindrance for a quick uh, development and a timely one of wireless solutions. Huh? And with all the availability of the spectrum at reasonable cost, one should be able to guarantee in the implementation of those cases of use required by the different verticals, once in ports, airports, roads, mines, manufacturing plants, public utilities, and so on, in all those areas of the economy that you are seeing there. So we have cases, specific cases of the use in the different processes of the different uh, value chains uh, or steps or chains in the value chain and then we have in matters of latency in terms of broadband in terms of reliability security and efficiency according to the case of use it would be greater the technical requirement in one or another sense it is also important to mention also What was presented this morning, the guest speaker, about the spectrum that at the end of the day should be available when and when, where it is required. Once again, I insist it is a matter of opportunities that uh, Vivienne actually mentioned in her presentation. It's not worth, not enough to have a spectrum solution within five years when the requirement is now. That actually means uh, backwardness, lack of modernity, and slowing down your productive value chain. I think that those are the messages that we were able to evidence in the 15 workshops that we had in 2020 and in 2021 between a and &E and Sintel and with the participation of all the stakeholders of the sector. As was mentioned here with the committee, the a and &E director, everything of these working tables, all these workshops are and were a fundamental input in formulating the master plan of the use of the spectrum that currently is uh, actually coming out of the oven. I think that uh, with this, I will finish my presentation. I will be open to the Q&A that one would have in the panel. Thank you very much, Benito. Jose, thank you very much for your presentation. Very thorough. Effectively, yes, I mean, the results of these uh, workshops were inputs for building the master spectrum plan. And from the a and &E, the idea is to continue to strengthen the relationship with our interest group, in particular with productive sectors. So very probably, we are going to continue to meet in different working tables with them the next year. Now I would like to give a mic 
to Juan Manuel Morida. He's the leader of Colombia is Intelligent uh, with their presentation of their introduction. So Juan David, go ahead. Hi, thank you very much, Diana. And, and thank you very much to all the people who are accompanying us today, in particular, to thank Ricardo for the for the any team and all the people and inventors as you have already mentioned it is all too clear the need of spectrum for the country just about all the productive activities that we have there here i would wish to add in the business sector that i come from of the importance of the spectrum for what I have to do for the providing public utilities here here just as an example the service of power generation the role of the ICTs and the roles of the spectrum is fundamental to actually achieve that intelligent service where we have a great amount of company, a great amount of users, and then we have our sector that is called up. The ones that is most critical in terms of critical infrastructure in the cybernetic world, and we have some characteristics of our market of the amount of users that is a bit more than 16 million users that we have coverage in the country of rural ones we have a coverage and then we have resources in terms of subsidies that we have that we need to orient and to see the challenges that we have in the future many of them have seen about the critical operation there about the renewables also about the mitigation ones of the um sort of uh, uh, greenhouse gases and then we have a lot of challenges we have electric vehicles now we we advanced generation, we creating micro networks and so on. And this all leads that our electric sector become a greater generator of data and as such as the explosion of these handheld technologies actually makes our system as such public utilities, who, as we mentioned, to become a, a data generation so that we can do the protection of the service and to be able to do telecontrol and they can do all the metering of the participating version of the users and then one of these activities with these users. So with this, and with everything you have been able to see in the last shifts of uh, the recent years and to see how the spectrum impact there. So I would like to leave you three fundamental messages added to the ones that we have actually given to the panelists. The first one of them is the importance of the use of the use of the spectrum with the ones that we have there is the need that the public utilities can have priority access in terms of availability, in terms of reliability, and in economic terms. So that is associated with the use of uh, robust ecosystems that allow us to use uh, optimum use of the different technologies. Um, added to this is also important to understand that there are different applications in the use of the spectrum, particularly the commercial ones, but also to support the public utilities, the ones that we lose and the, the mission criticals. We need to protect all those critical um, missions that are needed to provide the service. And a last point that has actually been mentioned from the spectrum policy and the law of the ticks is actually to uh, care about the, the well-being of everyone. This is the third message that I wanted to share with you is that we have actually taken important steps. We have been working with the A&E signals, with the different possibilities that we may have for the use of the spectrum. And that is actually important for our power grid to be able to have that balance between a priority access, a access with reliability and security, and actually even more important so that you can do it there in such a way that it is accessible to all users in Colombia. So with this, I wanted to leave that three messages in this conference for today. Thank you very much. Juan David, thank you very much. Effectively, with this uh, power grid sector and historically the A&E, we have had a very close relationship, as you indicated, is one of those sectors and strategic sectors of our economy. Right. With the presentations of our guest speakers, we have actually tackled a good chunk of what we wanted to talk about so much today in this venue. There is actually a tiny topic that I would like to cover it very quickly with our guest speakers that actually have there. I know that one or two had to leave, but it's actually to speak a bit about the economic recovery, what's actually coming after the pandemic. Recently, in a report by the IDB, they actually placed a, a 
this recovery has been unfair. The strongest economies, most competitive economies, have been able to do the recovery much faster than those economies that are not that robust, that are slower and everything. And they're going slowly in that post-COVID recovery. I would like for you to, to comment is how can we take this a lost field in economic matters through uh, wireless communication. So for this, I would like to invite Paola. If we could start a round of questions with you, this last section of the topics that we wish to talk with you. How do you consider that that lost ground, we can recover it uh, economically as of the wireless communications or the services? Vale. Right, so very clearly, let's just say that we have seen their figures that actually support that we have the I IUT invoicing. You, we hope that actually they will grow uh, up to $145 million. And in 2018, we actually were having an increase of about 350% in less than 10 years. So the use of technology of the spectrum is needed and, and then um, we actually forces us to concentrate ourselves in this type of this technology around the industrial, uh, the fifth industrial revolution. It would be a tool to improve competitiveness at companies or to improve uh, uh, whatever it may be, because by information grab with sensors, we can actually make better decisions and this is going to help the wireless, uh, the wire communication, the fixed landline with there. Of course, the spectrum is always fundamental. We've actually mentioned in this uh, uh, meeting that because without spectrum, we cannot have wireless communication. That's the point. So let's just speak of mobility. We're talking about uh, covering great spaces and on accessible areas to transport the bulk of data and for this, all of this is necessary. So actually I see the opportunity of economic reactivation precisely when we do the implementation of these technologies in cities, at industries. Actually, we from the center, we have actually tackling this subject, let's just say in an articulated way, nationally and regionally, so that we can actually have some programs that we can do and what possibility these people will be able to participate and adopt new technology at these uh, uh, wireless communications and with anyone there of the revolution that we have left, then we can advance on those terms. Thank you very much. And so now it's clear the message. There it is for the uh, bet on IOTIN. Yes, of course, a hundred percent. Yes. Just one second, one, 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 one last thing that I forgot to say, fundamental that we that we do we have spectrum is that this digital divide is actually to close we need to have reactivated fundamentals is to have these designation process that the spectrum be available that was a little and i didn't mean to interrupt sorry go ahead santiago right well thank you very much very quickly i mean following the very same concern i guess that for all of us it'd be the question and to say it very completely, and there, for effects of what we're saying, it's actually a competitiveness issue, right? This is across the, the board. Why well, should we have this in there? And then we have to be very concrete. It's very ambitious. What we have there. And then we see what they did in the US, and even what they're doing right now of betting even further the goal of this government is in, in march there and we have to be even more ambitious more aggressive first point what's going to be what indicator should be a hundred percent connected in the next term of the government before halfway of the government this is, should be like a, an aggressive goal i know it's a large but we should do it but then in a very concrete way it's precisely that we have there and then we have there uh, and then, and then we have the spectrum. Why do we have the social impact of this news? And then we have there, we have to bring it down to the territory. So, so it's not just an issue of economics, but actually after the 
is how we have a great enabler and it's a great uh, tool for all the different realities of the economy. The third point very concretely, and that is clearly that we have an issue of costs in terms of uh, improving the issue of energy. This goes hand in hand with physical infrastructure per se. And I like to say for the purpose of what's happening, Colombia has an enormous potential that behind all of these reality to be more competitive, to be more attractive. Actually, we're going to have other circumstances driving issues. It could be yes or no, the, 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 the host of the next unicorn. Colombia should be the axis of what should happen in ecosystems. In Latin America, we should have to be the host of all these technology companies that actually it's an anchor and actually that robustly in, intertwines everything because we become in, uh, in attractive in infrastructure and in deploy the information. Thirdly, as Paola was saying, is reality of using technology, our survey of uh, transformation. There are many technologies that are known but are not used. So how does productivity actually improve? And finally on this, what we can find is that to go further of the recovery and so on, and then we have to change this and reactivation loans that are, and their, their economic development. And then we have there that is so important and useful there, where one says and sees this spectrum as a great enabler, and we just have to take advantage of it. So the issue of 5G, we have them there. Um, and then we have actually evidence there in Singapore and Tokyo, they do the test of 5G vehicles with a conversation with several companies. And then we have there the applications that you may have for other scenarios. If we could actually do it in Heriko and Tokyo with autonomous vehicles with this mix and imagine what we can do. Thank you very much, Santiago. Viviana. Uh, and I have to insist that these panels, I find this great and this one, were not only very aligned, but actually each one of all the ones that we have of these sectors, how they can contribute to that grain of salt for this great role of the spectrum in the digital transformation. So I am not going to repeat certain elements because I fully agree with Paola as well as Santiago, but I also want to leave a general message and that's actually to open the the doors there for the, the planning department, planning ministry as a technical branch of government that we have like this possibility of having the continuity of the policies and so on, because we actually have there, and then we have there, yes, yeah, yes, and then we have uh, the pandemic, and then we have there, there, because I have there, because we precisely have that role of, of coordinator and so on, because what I'm seeing is that we contribute is actually through to be able to coordinate and articulate is not easy. That in general terms for now, answering to the question. General, entonces, las telecomunicaciones en general, pues, digamos, son clave para poder, eh, pues, llegar, digamos, la transformación digital a todos los telecomunications. To, to take the digital transformation to all territories of the country. Basically, to say that during the pandemics, uh, before and after, those processes of reactivation are taking us to think that we clearly need to continue deploying infrastructure, increase the wireless services, because basically that would allow the different company sectors that uh, the entire national economy, regardless of the size of the company, can adopt those new dynamics of the market. Always the fourth industrial revolution has shown that evolution of technologies and what is the best use for them. If we want to achieve what we want, we need to go in that direction. And here, the basic measures is uh, the IDBN, the Tramecan Development Bank study. The, the con one of the consequences of COVID and the mitigation of future effects is, uh, as recommendation, is to promote innovative ways of providing coverage to rural zones. This message, and not only from IDB, but, but we have a, a much, a much aware of it, and we need to go working on that. And what have been done to recover that lost uh, ground, as we said. Uh, one of the panelists mentioned that, and that is through the complex 4023 that pertains economic reactivation, where that reactivation policy is uh, explained. And we have an important element in that is not only we thinking in terms of reactivation because of the pandemics, this is might be a medium term to long term policy to establish new capabilities in productive sector and institutional framework, uh, a digital enablers that both in the short, medium and long term 
can or will allow to take that route to, towards the, the industries 4.0. So we have their connectivity, we have their digital transformation, among many others. But just to close this uh, remark, once again, what I was saying, next year we will be very much focused in exploring new ways of modernizing the spectrum market. I was telling you about the possibility of secondary market uh, to favor the use of the free spectrum to increase the, the favor the, de the deployment infrastructure, also regional uh, allocation. We also need to find ways of getting being more efficient uh, and effective in the management and use of spectrum. As the law demands, of course, and provides for, and the 1978 law provides the basic rules for that. And that's my final remarks. Thank you, Viviana. And to close our discussion, Jose, the floor is yours. Thank you, Diana. I think that um, we have all explored this topic, and I think that what is important to retake that uh, route, not only to retake the route, but uh, as I was saying in the Private Council for Competitive, to take the advantage of that uh, rebound effect. The pandemic is generating actually is an enormous opportunity to answer and take benefit of that opportunity. Uh, no, that's part of the current situation. What we need to do, really, from the, the spectrum point of view, is to dynamize this allocation. Um, I must insist once more that it is now never. Uh, you cannot remain planning and planning and planning. No, but yes. Uh, you cannot st stick to that forever. Rather, you need to react so that uh, I must insist on one more, and also Sofcom was mentioned it this morning. But besides dynamizing the allocation uh, spectrum, um, that, uh, need to think about reasonable prices, as Santiago was mentioned in there, because that will allow that networks and wireless solutions can be implemented and expanded quicker than what uh, it was in 4G. According to Blunder, Blumberg, the cost of 4G, uh, let's say, uh, stop or diminish the velocity of expansion of 4G. Another important thing is the coordination of the different stakeholders involved. And this is something that Anna has been, been working on when it comes to the relations with these different stakeholders. That is to get a, a clear approach or to get the, the supply and demand uh, become closer uh, to uh, take it to the industry, take it to the providers of service, the providers of technology, so that we are on the same page, you know, uh, proposing solutions and not as in opposite corners, uh, everyone pull it uh, for his, uh, his own side. So this is something that have been said uh, from a long time ago, that there should be a good coordination between private and public sector, the academia, as now, is the time according to what uh, Anne did, did in 2021 so far uh, is something that is accepted and should be continued. That's what comes to my mind in the first place to, let's say, um, take benefit of that rebound effect of, of the pandemics. Diana, 
Hola, ¿me escuchas? Yo te escucho. Agradecemos a todos por sus interesantes intervenciones. Para finalizar, invito al director de la Agencia del Espectro, Miguel. We thank you all for a very interesting participation. Now we have the official closing of this 11th edition of the International Congress of Spectrum. Por favor, me ayudan con la presentación. Bueno, en el día de hoy hemos tenido una jornada muy productiva. Muy Thank excelente. you. Today we have had a very productive session, a very demanding. We have uh, numerous contributions uh, on part of um, experts, uh, national and international experts. So as you can see in your screen, we have uh, had a participation uh, big about technical discussions related to spectrum. We had 10 national speakers, 28 international speakers, over 1,000 persons that registered and over 700 30 persons attended the Congress, and in each presentation, during each discussion, we had on average 280 persons attended. So that shows really the big interest that exists in this uh, topic so relevant today, especially when we are talking about digital transformation, where the spectrum is essential, it is an enabler. That's why uh, I must say that it's important to work on a cooperative basis, to work as a team for the construction of the country that we need. As we have said before, we are ending here uh, after discussing very important relevant topics uh, for the country and the region. Besides that, we are happy with the, uh, the welcoming given to this event, with the amount of speakers and the number of persons that registered and participated actually, uh, or attended this event. Let's remember that uh, during the opening of the event, uh, the Minister of ICT gave us the welcoming to the panelists, to the guests in general. But in addition to that, we receive an invitation to participate in the consultations that this, that is that the ministry have opened for comments, in particular the draft project for spectrum ceilings. And later on, with the participation of the radio communications officer ITU, Mario Manevich, he presented us with the topic, what can we do for spectrum? There, we mentioned aspects to be considered when it comes to spectrum management, both national and regional. Topics such as uh, policy for spectrum regulation of spectrum, international regulation, international standards, permits and license for use of sperm spectrum, uh, asking for a comprehensive approach, considering the environmental impact. But there are important challenges, challenges that for all of us are quite relevant. Let's work in pro-connectivity, let's work in pro-social inclusion, for sustainability. Uh, we were we heard the spectrum must be as located fairly and suitably. There are many services that demand spectrum in each band. And that's why we need to look at everything that is happening uh, in the complete uh, ecosystem on a holistic manner. Now, after that came the ANE, we took advantage of that to say that during the past three years, ANE has carried out different projects aiming at increasing the availability of spectrum to diminish the compensation for, you know, and to treat fairly all stakeholders in the market. And this is part of 11 projects, some of them completed, some of them are still ongoing. We presented the policy for spectrum 2020 to 2024 and the roadmap for the next 25 years materialized among other things with the proposal of the master plan for spectrum management. The topic of spectrum for verticals and future allocations was treated in the second panel. We saw use cases for verticals, 5G, like the case that Canada showed us in farming. And 
take advantage of its local licensing and automation through the access of spectrum and also progress made in Brazil and the United Kingdom. Now then, in the mega constellations panel, that is satellite, we were accompanied by four companies that deploying their satellite system. We can highlight from the other following. First of all, that type of systems are designed to look for global coverage and that way provide services to places where coverage under land or traditional systems are non-existent. Number two, they mentioned that this deployment can be made of over 3,000 satellites <clears throat> that can be made gradually and in different orbits. We also heard that this type of systems allow to the, the, the facilitate the deployment of 5G, whether in complementary centers or under the non-interference in sharing with 5G. In respect to initiatives such as Open Ramp, we saw that this allowed to materialize open ecosystems and serve to promote the participation and cooperation of multiple competitors. Besides, it's not an idea because there are already implementations of that in Colombia. But still, there are challenges such as the interoperability of multiple operators, the business model allowing to monetize this technology and reach high levels of reliability in the provision of the service. From another point of view, in respect to agenda for the World Telecommunications Conference that ITU is organizing for 2023, the president of the preparation group presented us with the progress made in preparation for this conference. So, yeah, such progress is the expression of the preliminary views with countries without proposing a specific solution, uh, manifest their opinion about certain needs of, uh, um, uh, according to their own uh, interests. On the other hand, in the rural connectivity panel and reduction of digital divide, we saw the importance of carrying on additional efforts to reach remote and rural areas. We also saw that we are living in a historical moment where multiple technologies are con consolidated. And more than ever, we need to eliminate the barrier between the rural and the urban. How dynamic access can help to create a much broader ecosystem requiring greater web, more investment. Different models that support are supported with cooperation with big players of the industry. In the talk about monitoring, the French agency, uh, reg, French regulator, show us the fact that interference, intentional or not, represent a threat for all stakeholders of the economy and the state. INFR have received over 1,500 claim, complaints about interference in 2010 and expect that this number is greater for 2021. This on account that there are more uses of spectrum, there are more services that require spectrum, there's more penetration of radio telecommunications in general. Therefore, expectations of more interference and more work required to control. In response to interference, the French regulated carry out the following activities. Intervention in the case of breach of use, preventative control and corrective control, uh, use of uh, fixed mobile stations that are support, supported by a centralized database. Innovation and continuous training on modernization and perspective analysis. On the other hand, the issue of national research, uh, radio series for 5G and human health, the analysis carried out by national universities in a project was shown here. And the final panel of this Congress deal with the topic of the role of spectrum within the framework of digital transformation in Colombia. There it was said that the spectrum is the strategic input, a neighbor of the value chain of the, and it is an enabler for digital transformation and promotes the economic reactivation of the country, promotes digital transformation with the implementation of emerging technologies to increase productivity of SMEs, for instance, uh, across the region. But 
let's consider that there are a series of challenges where proposals like innovation, and we need to innovate in many ways. We need to innovate in productivity, but also innovate in the way spectrum is managed and the way it is allocated. We need to develop new ways or innovative ways of allocating spectrum, allowing at the same time to implement solutions, to expand connectivity, reduce and as much as possible to eliminate the digital, digital divide. To meet the goals that my, Dr. Manuel explained to us in the very beginning of the morning. And to end, I want to thank on my behalf and also as director of National Agency Spectrum in Colombia, I want to thank the Minister for ICT in Colombia. Doctora Carmelija Valderrama, and to the representatives of regulators from Brazil, Canada, Germany, France, United Kingdom, to the panelists, to the speakers, and to national and international organizations that have participated in this very important event. The list is long. Apologies to those that I did not mention. Technology operators, ICTs, uh, academia, and industry and other productive sectors. I want to thank as well the hard work of our entire team in the ANE in order to carry out this important event for the benefit of the entire country. RTVC and public media, the radio and television of Colombia, to the participants in attendance of production, camera operators, all of them that make possible this event, this 11th edition International Congress of Spectrum, a neighbor of development and competitiveness. Finally, I want to thank our national and international audience that exceeded 730 participants in a virtual mode from different parts of the world. Many thanks to you all. And from now, for this very moment, you are invited to participate in the 12th edition in 2022, uh, this International Congress of Spectrum. Thanks a lot. Agradecemos al ingeniero Anzola, a todos los conferencistas por participar. We thank Ingenier Anzola and all speakers for participating. And to all of you who are connected with this 11th edition of International Congress of Spectrum. Thanks and remember to follow us on social media and visit our webpage, www.ane.gov.co. We wait for you next year. Happy afternoon.